Welcome to Financial Assets Part 3. In this module, we'll be learning more about accounts receivable. Accounts receivable is the amount owed from customers from credit sales. It's relative, relatively liquid and it usually converts to cash within 60 to 90 days. It's reported as a current asset on the balance sheet, but it's reported at the net realizable value and not the total amount of accounts receivable. Net realizable value is another way of saying the amount that we expect to collect from our customers. In an ideal world, everyone would pay what they promised to pay. Unfortunately, we don't live in that ideal world and sometimes customers promise to pay and fail to pay. If we reported accounts receivable at the total amount promised, we would be overstating our asset because that's not how much we will probably collect. Remember, accounts receivable is a probable future economic benefit, so we need to report accounts receivable as the amount that we will probably collect. In order to do that, we create an account called Allowance for Uncollectible Accounts, and that's also referred to as Allowance for Doubtful Accounts at times. Accounts receivable minus the allowance is equal to the net realizable value. That really means that the allowance for uncollectible accounts is an estimate of the amount that we think we won't collect. The allowance for doubtful accounts is a contra asset account. It has a normal credit balance and it offsets or reduces accounts receivable. It's an estimate and not a precise calculation. In the allowance for doubtful accounts, we're not identifying specific customers that we think won't pay, but of the total group of customers that have promised to pay, we're estimating some percentage won't actually pay. The amount of the adjusting entry to record the allowance for doubtful accounts depends on past trends and current economic conditions. In other words, we use what we know from our history as well as what we know about the current economic conditions to make our estimate. The estimate of uncollectible accounts receivable fulfills two accounting concepts. All accounts receivable will not be collected, therefore not all accounts receivable are assets. By reporting all accounts receivable as, our, as an asset, we would be overstating our assets. Again, assets are probable future economic benefits, and it's not probable that we'll collect all accounts receivable. Also involved is the matching principle. When we sell goods on account, we generate sales revenue. The uncollectible account expense is related to that sales revenue Therefore, the expense associated with that sales revenue should be estimated and reported on the income statement in the same time period as the related sales. The, estimate, the methods to estimate the uncollectible expense is the balance sheet approach or sometimes uh, referred to as the aging or accounts receivable method. This method estimates uncollectible accounts based on the age of each of the accounts receivable. Each age group has a different probability of being uncollectible. The estimated uncollectible amount appears as an ending credit balance in the allowance for doubtful accounts. So effectively, when we use the balance sheet approach or the aging accounts receivable method, we, did, we look at all of our accounts receivable, determine of all of our accounts receivable, the percentage that will be uncollectible, and we, that will be our balance in the allowance for doubtful account. Alternatively, we can use the income statement approach. The income statement approach uses our past experience to estimate the expense based on net credit sales. If we use this approach, this is the amount of the expense and the 
in turn the amount of the journal entry, regardless of the balance in the allowance for doubtful accounts. Net credit sales multiplied by the percentage is equal to the amount of the journal entry or the amount of our bad debt expense. This represents just an introduction to the methods for estimating bad debt expense or the balance in the allowance for doubtful accounts. More work would be needed to get a greater understanding of how to actually do these calculations. Once we estimate the amount, the journal entry required would be a debit to uncollectible accounts expense and a credit to allowance for doubtful accounts. If we think about this journal entry, we're increasing our expense, which decreases net income and also decreases equity. Crediting allowance for doubtful accounts reduces our net reported asset. Recall that the allowance for doubtful accounts is a contra asset. When we credit it, we're increasing the contra asset and reducing the net reported asset. So in summary, the effects of this transaction increase expense, decrease net income, decrease equity, also decreasing assets. When we write off an uncollectible accounts receivable, this is when we determine that a specific customer will not pay us and we decide to write that customer off. That means we're no longer going to keep this customer on our records in accounts receivable. When we do this, we debit the allowance for doubtful accounts and credit accounts receivable. By debiting the allowance for doubtful accounts, we're lowering the allowance. By crediting accounts receivable, we're lowering accounts receivable. The effect of this transaction is that it affects two asset accounts but leaves the total asset or the net realizable value of accounts receivable the same before and after the write-off of the customer. To recap a bit, when we make our estimate, we incur the expense. When we write off a customer, no additional expense is incurred. If we've written off a customer in the past and that customer comes in and wants to pay us, the first step in the process is to reinstate the previously written off account. This means we do the opposite of what we did when we wrote the customer off. In other words, we debit accounts receivable and we credit allowance for doubtful accounts. After we reinstate the customer, we record the collection of the cash just like normal by debiting cash and crediting accounts receivable. Finally, we'll mention the direct write-off method. The direct write-off method normally is not consistent with generally accepted accounting principles and is used in very rare cases. With the direct write-off method, we don't use the valuation account or the allowance for uncollectible accounts. We don't estimate our uncollectible accounts and our bad debt expense. expense we, in turn, expense uncollectible accounts as they become uncollectible. There's no attempt to match revenue with expenses of uncollectible accounts, and there's no attempt to report receivables at their net realizable value. Again, this method is not consistent with GAAP, but is used in situations where uncollectible account expense is very small or would lead to an, not a material difference with the, uh, one of the allowance methods. In this method, when we write off a customer, we debit the uncollectible account expense and credit accounts receivable. Collecting cash in a timely manner is always important to businesses. In order to collect cash more timely, businesses use many different approaches. Two of these approaches are offering discounts for timely payment. A discount could be something like 210 net 30. This means that our, we would give our customers a 2% discount if they paid within 30 days. In addition, businesses can factor their accounts receivable, and this is where they sell their receivables to a third party. 
The third party then pays the business cash right away. The customer then is, is obligated to the third party. In review, account receivable is the amount owed from customers from credit sales. It should be reported at net realizable, net realizable value or the amount you expect to collect. There are two different ways to estimate the uncollectible amount. That's the balance sheet approach and the income statement approach. We briefly reviewed those ways, but if you need to calculate those amounts, you would want to spend more time uh, getting a better understanding of how to estimate uncollectible accounts. Important accounting events include credit sales to customers, estimating uncollectible accounts, writing off an account, and recovery of an account previously written off. Ways to speed up receipt of cash include offering cash discounts for time, timely payment, as well as factoring accounts receivable. This concludes our discussion on accounts receivable.